My name is Nico Preen. I'm a windsurfer, professional windsurfer. And I'm uh, René Villa from the R&D at Starboard. Hi, I'm Gonzalo Costajel from Argentina. I'm part of the Starboard team. I, I work on the R&D as well. I'm Matteo Aquino. I'm 33 and I, I'm a pro rider, slalom, in uh, Starboard windsurfing. Testing boards for me means progression, uh, moving forward, finding new ideas, finding new ways and also yeah, basically means a lot of fun because you get to try boards that nobody else ever tried and you get to find out new things and yeah, learn a lot about windsurfing. The whole development process starts uh, in the Starboard headquarters in Thailand where we have a, a big workshop with a lot of shapers working there. And um, we start obviously with an idea, but, and that idea comes from the previous year product. So we kind of, let's say, brainstorm ideas with Remy and all the team of what we will need for the coming seasons. We put these ideas in a, into a 3D shape and uh, we will start seeing, seeing it and make a prototype out of it. And then uh, if we agree on the sizes, on how the future looks like for the boards, then it kind of builds the prototypes over there in the, in the Starboard headquarters in Thailand. We make this board to be master. So I would like to you finish this board for yesterday, as usual, okay? And uh, so Leo, Leo. Leo, Leo, yeah, 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 Leo. I hope so. Okay, uh, you will try, I think. This is what you like to say. I will try, but important to finish for yesterday, yeah? okay? I know this is fine. Thank you. <laughs> so here we modify the rail to be a more sharp, sharp until the uh, tuck line to have a, a extra spicy on performance. So uh, interesting to set, test this uh, next week. We like testing in Tarifa because you have pretty much wind guaranteed. So we travel there all together and we know that in this week when we go, there will most likely be wind to test all sorts of boards. Well, testing racing boards is always uh, a really fun thing to do. You know, we all have these ideas when we are sailing and we are t uh, going full power. We are thinking what can change on the board to make us go faster or with more control. Since I was racing, I was trying to always understand what I can do better to improve the performance of the board, the sail, the fin, and etc. So it was uh, something with uh, my passion to try to improve. We just want to have the best product. Uh, I mean, I'm racing myself, so I want to have the best board under my feet during a race. And, and because you can get an advantage this way and you're trying to find advantages really. And uh, this gives the drive to make a better and better board. It's always interesting to test boards. At the beginning of, uh, of my career in Starboard, uh, I didn't enjoy it too much. And year after year, I got to know better uh, Remy and the guys. And, how it works actually, I started understanding a bit better and I really want to provide myself and, and, the, and the riders using Starboard the best gear possible. It's, it's good fun, it's nice to develop new gear and to be there testing new boards. Yeah, I'm the toys for the day, so, so my Sonic. Three prototypes uh, include the, the reference. In the beginning of the development process of a new model year, the reference board is usually the production board from the previous year. So that's the reference and the new board has to be better than that board. Then we try the different prototypes we have and try to feel if this board works better than the reference in different aspects. Uh, if we talk about the slalom board, for example, of course it has to be faster, the acceleration has to be there. 
uh, it has to go well through the jibes and uh, it has to have a lot of control. Okay, so we're going out for a first test now. The other guy's already outside. You always need a reference. There's always two people at the same time, sometimes three as well. We have two prototypes and we're just gonna go out and compare what the speed differences are and how well it jibes, how the controllability is with this particular sail size on a 7.4 now. The other board out there is the production board. That's our reference. I'm going out on the prototype. So you go out, I'm on board A and uh, let's say Nico is on board B. Then we go out and we see how we go. We go back, I stay on A and Nico takes board C, for example. And we go out again. And then we see if he improved or it got worse. The point is that you have to think, you have to trust the fact that I, I, I go the same way as I did before. So you need to know the guy, trust him. There is, has to be that kind of trust between the riders. So after our test runs, uh, we come back to the beach and we give our feedback to Remy, uh, Remy being our product manager. He's then either writing down or recording our feedback so that we have it saved somewhere. Isonic 73 referrals, yes, Isonic 73, DT. Uh, definitely plane worse and the jive, exit of the jive was worse. But when you're on trim and powered up, it has probably the best trim. You don't feel any chop or any wave. But now that the wind died a little bit, it felt like it was needed a little more power. Reference had a little more power. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we were hitting the gas, it was fast, very fast and very easy. So a lot of potential. Sick trim the board. Mm -hmm. Super, super stable. No, no tail walking. Just when you pass the wave, it keeps pointing straight. Mm -hmm. The nose doesn't go up or down. So super nice trim, uh, which makes it fast. It's very controllable. Also, it gave a lot of power. So if you wanted to point a bit, it was, uh, felt extremely nice. Uh, it felt horrible in the jive. So uh, you, can't, you can't carve at all. The board, kind of when you, when you carve, it wants to stop. Getting planning, very nice. On the way in, it was a bit closer to the production. So it had more potential on the way out, I felt like. Um, but overall, I think this, this one has the most potential. So, yeah, it uh, felt, felt very fast, it was very fast. It was the only board, Gonzalo was a bit faster than me on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we try to not listen to each other's feedback usually, so that we can give a little bit more unbiased feedback. Because when you, when you listen to the other one's feedback, maybe subconsciously your feedback might change a little bit. And the stuff that I like really is that my expectation is translated by what they say. My chef, they, the feedback that they get is exactly what I was thinking when I designed the board. So this is pretty good. Obviously between one test and the other, I mean, Remy takes feedbacks from us on the beach that is putting down written and it kind of gives like a report of what we tested at the end of the test. And then base, basing ourselves on that, we kind of start brainstorming again for the next test so what shall we improve what can we improve what like what direction shall we take for like making the next test uh, more useful let's say yeah. now i want to retry this but now we will make uh, the test uh, of little modification on the reference so to see if the reference getting better than this board because it look like the best trim is this one but the jive look like is uh, for Gonzalo and you, it's not good. Um, so I will modify this one. Uh, I like uh, to play uh, like a Lego on my board, so I can make uh, many modifications uh, at the beach and test, uh, test uh, so it's, it's going faster and uh, we get a proper result uh, quicker. He has many, many screws everywhere. First time he came with this plus, we saw screws everywhere. We're like, what, what is this, Remy? 
And he's like, ah, these are plugs. And then uh, we will test like that. And then uh, he started like removing plugs and we were like, ah, no, this is not gonna make any difference. And even the smallest difference makes, uh, makes it a big difference in the water. So it's really always interesting. And it's always like a kind of opening new uh, scenarios, let's say. So I will modify this one just by changing the fin because the fin will be one cm more back. So it normally will make the board flying a little bit more. Yeah. So let's try that. The fin is one cm more back. Yeah. So to try to lift the board a little bit more. And we have other option also here to trim the board higher. But also we have a full strap position with more back. So multiple position, multiple combinations that we can test. When testing, uh, depending the board that we, we are testing, we, we try to focus on what we need to improve. So in a slalom board, you wanna obviously keep your top speed and uh, the possibility to get to that first mark uh, is kind of the most important thing. For racing, like usually we focus the most on the speed. I mean, the, you, you want to get to the first mark first. So the, the, the slalom competition is way easier if you get to the first mark first. So that means good acceleration out of the starting line and good top end speed. These are the two keys to get to the first mark first. Then you need a good jibe beam. So these are the, the ter this is the third one, but I wouldn't say it's the less important. Maybe it's slightly less important than the acceleration and the top speed, because if you get to the first mark first, then you can also jibe a little worse and you can still win the race but you you're not a machine so eventually you're gonna get a bad start or something and you need to come back and to come back you need acceleration out of good jibes and the jibes are coming from the board again the, the key to win is your mindset and what you're using there is no way you're gonna win with uh, uh, with bad gear so it is really really important to develop something really good that allows you to be out there in front. Does the nose go up when it hits the chop? Does the nose point straight down? Does it give you a good trim? Does the board come free easily? So do I have to push a lot with my back leg? So all the feedback we get comes of course through the legs and uh, you really try to find out how your body works in sync with the board. It's better with a thin back, you don't feel so sticky to the water. It's a bit more free, but I have uh, troubles pointing. Uh, I feel like I cannot give enough pressure on the fin, or I want my foot wants to go further back, or it wants to go further outside. But it's uh, super stable, has very little roll. That definitely is very comfortable, so yeah, it's very, very nice trim. And uh, right now, that probably is faster than the V3. So the reference to me got a lot better mm -hmm. with the feedback. Uh, I actually think I prefer the reference. So V3 maybe was a little too powerful for me now. Mm -hmm. uh, it wants to rail and sit on the rail mm -hmm. comfortably, but I felt a lot a bit easier on the reference. I think I would choose reference now. The reason why I register everything, because uh, you cannot digest on the beach what is going on, because you are doing so much stuff at the same time, so you are listening, okay, you have the feedback, but a week after, I digest of this, I listen everything, blah, 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 blah. I have my own feedback also because of my feeling. And then I start to make my milkshake to, uh, to make the, the new, uh, new steps. I think generally in development, you have to talk a lot. You have to just tell each other what you feel, what you think, but also we discuss right away what we can do maybe. So. What can we do if the board maybe didn't get the acceleration? Can we move the fin a little bit? Is there a change that we can do right there, right on the beach? Or is it a change that we need to do in the workshop? So if we can do it right away, we will do it right away on the beach or otherwise we put the board aside and bring it to the workshop in the evening. The wind stop. I think I can get this board more in the fin by uh, modifying a little bit the flaps. 
that means this. So reduce the length of this and uh, we will get uh, more easily on the trim with less effort. So where, where are you going now? To the final? Ah, <laughs> when I'm in Tarifa, I have to go to uh, see my friend uh, Danny and uh, then he uh, will uh, modify uh, my board. We do this uh, a lot uh, with him uh, and uh, we do this many times and he's uh, working uh, com like a charm, so it's perfect. Now I will modify that what I am calling the flaps. Like a motorboat, you have flaps in the back and this can trim the board differently. So by reducing the flat by 1 cm, we will make the board a little bit more free. Today we modify our board and, uh, because the board was uh, not perfectly on trim so I modify a little bit the cutaway so here and uh, Danny our friends uh, uh, help us uh, to uh, make this modification because I'm not in Thailand so uh, then uh, it's a perfect job I'm very happy but what's happening now is that development in foil boards is becoming really, really significant and uh, accelerating a, a lot, uh, at least with Starboard. We're finding so many new things, so many new, uh, new ideas to make it faster and faster and faster. And if you compare a foil board from two years ago to the boards we're developing now, there's a whole world in between there. And uh, yeah, this is the, probably the most exciting at the moment. The beauty is in this workshop that we can do changes really quickly. So we see the board in front of us and um, we can really hands on, we can feel it. It's not only a 3D program, but we can, uh, when we have the blank in front of us, can put the feet on, uh, see how it feels on the foot, maybe reshape a little bit. And uh, this is a whole different process than just working uh, with a computer program. And that's where we make our first prototypes. Then we test them either right away in Thailand, where we have a perfect test center, um, especially for all light wind boards and uh, everything that we need a bit more wind for. Um, yeah, we, we bring it to Europe, uh, sometimes Vietnam uh, for those testing programs. So there we find out a lot. We find, uh, we find out what the next prototype is and uh, start a new cycle. Now for today is foiling, generally foiling, wind is lighter today which is good for us because we needed some lighter wind and uh, we're going to do foil racing, so up and down racing board, one meter wide and as well we're doing uh, the X15 which is the foil slalom board. So plenty of stuff to do again. I think um, the fo like old foil gear, you can be whoever you want, you are never gonna win against new foil gear, impossible. Uh, I mean, you see straight away with the, um, with the Olympic class, is is an amazing like setup gear, easy, nice, compared to what there was before. I mean, there's not, there's no comparison, but it's already outdated, you know, like to what we have now, like, uh, for slalom foiling, like you jump on it, you feel like with a handbrake because, and it's just two years, you know, it's just two years that it came out. At the beginning, it felt kind of similar to what we were using in PWA. Now, from what we use in PWA, you jump on that, you feel like uh, it's like something from 10 years ago, and it's two years. No? So, this is the evolution, and it's what is kind of nice. Now, every year you change, every year you try to get like something better, and you're stoked about the result. And when you actually beat the guys on the race course, it's an amazing feeling.
to make photos, huh? but the stuff that I don't want to see at all in video or photos is that we see the ball. I'm a bit upset to see that uh, some brands are copying, so uh, I'm trying to hide my balls, of course, my development as much as possible. The reason why when there is uh, something very sensitive, like uh, last time in Tarifa, I refuse to test in Tarifa because uh, there is too much people on the beach. Uh, anyone can make photos and then uh, all the advantage that we may have uh, for the next year uh, fade away. Since we can show the boards, can we use your face to censor the board? <laughs> Yeah, so I feeling really good on that one. <laughs>
for much longer.